Here's the truth. You ready? Socioeconomic factors and race prevented action on the, depart on the part of the Department of Health. Infants, hear me, infants without identities, that's what they said. Nothing was done because the women were of color and minority status and, and immigrant status and because they were women of poverty. And because the babies had no identity. Really? Infants without identities. You may not instantly know the names of these precious babies, but they were living, breathing babies full of life, children that God formed in their mother's womb. He knew their name, make no mistake about it. He knew the number of the hairs on their head. He had ordained them. He had set them apart for a purpose before they were formed in their mother's womb. He could identify every last single one of them. In fact, he has already identified them and they are sitting in his lap in glory today and make no mistake mistake about it. God is merciful and he does not want to punish us, but he is just and he will require their blood at somebody's hands. Do I have a church strong enough for this? Do I have a people strong enough for this? Really do I? I'm just about finished. Our constitution promises the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the regulatory officials, I hope you're watching. Because you may run, but you cannot hide. There is a payday someday. And I pray, God, you find a place of repentance. I pray, God, that you fall down in humble submission and repentance before the God who you have insulted. Beg his forgiveness and receive it fully and freely. But the regulatory officials who were tasked with upholding the medical standards and enforcing the law allowed their lives to be brutally and atrociously, atrociously murdered and we should not be silent until every last one of them are held accountable and brought to justice under the full penalty of the law. This is a mass murdering, demented, serial killer and government officials are his accomplices. No doubt puppy mills in Pennsylvania got more attention from state regulators than obviously Gosnell's clinic got in the last 20 years. I got some good news. We are not they that stand back in the darkness at a distance and throw stones. May I just share with you, my dear brother and sister, you ever see a mouse in your house? You ever see a cockroach wiggle across the floor? After you caught that mouse or you squished that cockroach, did you think the problem was gone? If you see one, there are hundreds. And I will not rest until we so shake this nation that not only are demonized, pathetic men like this run out of business, but the government officials responsible are held to account.
A 41-year-old died November the 9th overdosing on anesthetic. Do you know why? Because the so-called doctor, good Dr. Gosnell, was administering the anesthetic to her from a cell phone to a young person with no training whatsoever. Now this kind of thing didn't go on every now and then. The staff has testified scores and scores of gruesome killings of infants born alive, crying and scheming, screaming killings became so routine, said they, that no one could put an exact number on how many were murdered. Clients would pay on a sliding scale depending on the weight of the baby. White clients were served in a separate waiting area from women of minority status or immigrant status because, said Gosnell, white clients are more apt to file complaints. For more than 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, government health and licensing officials repeated, repeated reports about Gosnell's dangerous practice, but no action was ever taken, even after agencies learned that women had died during routine abortions under his care. The grand jury noted, had state and local officials performed their duties properly, Gosnell's clinic would have been shut down decades ago if inspectors had looked solely for violation of Pennsylvania's abortion regulations. There would have been ample grounds to revoke the approval of the clinic's license as an abortion provider. Perhaps the best explanation of why this could go on for decade after decade came in this government comment from the grand jury report. We think the reason no one acted is because the women in question were poor and of color. I just have to slip this in parenthetically. I wonder how many pastors of color are stepping behind their pulpits today and declaring a stop to such outrage. I'd have marched with Dr. King in a heartbeat and I'm not gonna sit on the sidelines and let government officials say that this kind of heinous thing is allowed to go on because people are of color and because they don't have enough money in their pocket. Here's the truth. You ready? Socioeconomic factors and race prevented action on the, depart on the part of the Department of Health. Infants, hear me, infants without identities, that's what they said. Nothing was done because the women were of color and minority status and, and immigrant status and because they were women of poverty And because the babies had no identity. Really? Infants without identities. You may not instantly know the names of these precious babies, but they were living, breathing, Babies full of life, children that God formed in their mother's womb. He knew their name, make no mistake about it. He knew the number of the hairs on their head. He had ordained them. He had set them apart for a purpose before they were formed in their mother's womb. He could identify every last single one of them. In fact, he has already identified them and they are sitting in his lap in glory today and make no mistake mistake about it. God is merciful and he does not want to punish us, but he is just and he will require their blood at somebody's hands.